This is a robotic super soaker that tracks the movement of my head and displays whatever the barrel sees on these FPV goggles. So all I have to do in theory is put the goggles on, look around at my target, and I should be good to go. Hopefully. And this is my attempt to modernize the Super Soaker. You see, it all started when I read the Kickstarter campaign of a product called the Spyro One, and they claimed that their product was what it should be like in 2018. But I got to thinking, in modern times, it's all about drones and robots. We don't actually manually do this stuff anymore, right? So that's the approach we're gonna take here. Now let's go see how this thing is made, the electronics that it uses to make it possible, and how effective it is against the mightiest of foes. We're also going to test if it's simple enough and intuitive enough for a four-year-old to accurately use. <laughs> you may have noticed by now, but this doesn't look like a super soaker at all. And that's because it's actually a Nintendo Zapper that I have repurposed by removing all the internals and replacing them with a rubber hose connected to a 3D printed nozzle that's intended to increase the pressure to increase range. My son and I tested the zapper by hand after we stripped it and replaced all the internals just to make sure that everything was working as I wanted and I was getting the range I needed and man did this thing have some range. Nobody is safe in my house. And since absolutely nobody asked me about the electronics that make this thing work, we're gonna talk about it. It starts with the repurposed zapper that's mounted to a pan tilt servo assembly that is controlled by this radio receiver. The receiver gets commands from this transmitter that's actually being controlled by the head tracking unit, which is normally mounted to my FPV goggles. The head tracker has an inertial measurement unit that senses movement in three axes and sends signal through the radio equipment to control the servos on the pan tilt assembly. And these goggles are wirelessly connected to the camera on the front of the zapper, so I see exactly what it sees. When I finally had all the electronics hooked up, I did a test run to see if they worked as I expected, and judging by this creepy smile on my face, yeah, I'd say they worked. Lastly, to get this thing to spray, I stuffed a big pump in the box and plumbed it directly to the zapper. The pump is powered by a 12 volt battery, which is turned on and off by a servo. This is actually the only control on the transmitter that you have to touch. Everything else is based purely on head tracking. And this was also supposed to be controlled by one of these electronic switches, but after four of them failed in a row, I had to go the old school route and literally flick the switch with a servo. When it's all packed away, it's actually extremely portable, as you can see while I set up for testing. On a side note, I do keep the radio electronics in a separate plastic container because I worry that the big metal box may actually block the radio signals. I think that's valid. Through these first few tests, I was extremely happy with the results. We already knew the range was great, so I was mostly testing coverage and ease of use. It's literally as simple as looking at what you want to hit. And I could do all this from the comfort of my living room while my opponents are baking in the sun. At this point, we are ready for a live action test, so I brought out my favorite Super Soaker Challenger. And he begged to be sprayed first, so we just went for it. But of course, no matter how much he liked it, mom was there to swoop in and give him an unfair advantage. The real test of the robot was to see if a four-year-old could use the system accurately. After just a few minutes of familiarization, he made it immediately apparent that it would be absolutely no challenge. But it also brought out a weakness in the design that I hadn't really thought of, and that's that wildly erratic head movements that a normal adult would never make will throw the camera right off the barrel. And obviously when the camera's off the barrel, you can't see what you're pointing at anymore and the whole design's useless. But it's nothing that a little bit of hot glue and tape can't fix, and we are back to the party.
overall, aside from the camera falling off, everything else worked great and I didn't really see any failures. And maybe that's because the pan tilt assembly is actually a kit from Servo City. The servos are all scavenged from my wrecked and destroyed RC cars. And the um, goggles, head tracker, and camera are all from Fat Shark. So they all work together pretty well. So let's go all the way back to the Kickstarter campaign that convinced me to go along this modernization route. And let's start to compare how everything stacks up. My design is robotic and automatically head tracking, so you only have to look at what you want to hit. That's already awesome, but electronic super soakers have already been around forever. They're really not anything new, and even at that, they were really never that much better than the original super soakers that you just pumped and sprayed all over the place. With a robot, you can also sit comfortably in the air conditioning on a couch and still pretty much cover the entire pool without ever having to lift a finger. With the Spira, if you want to spray your partner in the back, you have to be physically present to do it. That's something I will never have to worry about. It's so simple to use that even my four-year-old was able to hit the targets he was going for without any major problems. And I was able to track moving targets like this RC car. And I didn't expect to be able to do that. And obviously, if I can do that, I can track my son swimming across the pool. It also gave me a chance to rekindle the fun of a Nintendo Zapper, which hasn't been useful for a long time, and googly eyes. Who doesn't love googly eyes? I had to throw them in here. So in my professional and totally unbiased opinion, of course I won. Overall, if I were to change anything though, it would be uh, servos because these aren't quite strong enough to hold it stable under quick movements. <laughs> you can see that the line of sight is bouncing all over the place. If you're wondering what practical application this technology actually has, that's a really easy one to answer actually. This is for a camera setup so I can look around when this pan tilt assembly is mounted to an RC car. It's the same sort of technology in my DJI goggles for my drone so I can look around without commanding a drone movement. Cat's ruining my filming. But controlling a robotic water gun with your head is obviously way more fun. That's really all there is to this one. It was a pretty simple project. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to reach out and let me know what you think. Thanks for watching.